Uh, now we are going to continue with the, uh, the tutorial of how to make a, a slider without programming or little programming. And basically today we are going to cover how to add a circle that we will use as a button, convert it to a symbol and make duplicates of it. So each, each little circle would correspond to each slide um, on, on, on the final thing. So we are going to open the slider basic and working from here. But before we do that, I want to show the final result from today's uh, work. So we will have this and the little circles I was referring are, are these. So this will be, you see the, 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 the hand clicking there. So if I click in the first one, it goes to the play the first one. If I click here, it goes to the third one and the second one and so on. So that's what we are going to, to, to work on today. Um, so as I said, we are going to make the one circle converted into a symbol. So today we're going to learn about symbols. And one interesting thing about symbols is a symbol can have its own timeline. So for instance, a slide with the text that has text animated on the slide, uh, instead of having everything separated in one big file as we have here, uh, we can have the slide with the text all in one symbol and the symbol has the timeline for the text to be animated. I started showing things the way and I, I did because it's the most simplistic. No no programming, no no uh, levels, I mean embedded things inside other things. But as you learn, you would like to, to try to to include everything that goes into a, a slide inside a symbol. And then we are going to, to create some labels in the timeline uh, so we can direct a I mean, we can create actions to, to the buttons. The buttons are going to be the circle uh, to go to particular places and play from there. Um, and also, as you saw on the example before, we, we centered the, the slideshow on the page. The, the previous one was not centered, so I, I will show how to do that. So, okay, let's get it started. So the first thing that we are going to do is make a circle. So at the top here, we have some drawing tools. So we get the ellipse tool and we go... Uh, let me see if I'm in the bottom here. So, yeah, probably I have some space. I want to put that mm, that a little bit through the bottom here. So I, I'm gonna start. Uh, I, I click Shift in order to to do a real circle, and I can do this little or big. It doesn't matter. The only thing is if you are going to to use this to be played on a phone, you want that circle to be at least a 48 pixels or something like that, because if not, the, the, the touch uh, controls will not be okay. Here is 35. We can leave it like that for now. And I will put it on the center of the, of the page, like dragging there. And now if I click the right button, I can say, okay, convert to symbol. And I will convert this to, let's say that we, we say this, we call this BTN. And I don't need an autoplay timeline. Uh, this is what I was referring to. Each symbol has its timeline. So I, I don't need to, to have anything there. So I click OK. And now under symbols, now I have an instance of that. So I can remove this from here, this particular symbol from there and make a now drag from here and, and put one there again i want to put it in the circle i didn't have to do this and let's say that this is button two i make a copy copy and paste i have a copy of that one and i want this one here and i let's call this button one and let's do another copy, another paste, excuse me. So we do, we do paste again, and now we move this one to the right, and let's call, call this one bottom three. All right, and this is a little bit too far compared to the other. 
Of course, we can put the 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 the, the, the positions very precise here. Uh, I don't care that much right now. This is a tutorial, but still a little bit. So probably like that. So that that looks fine. So now we need to to put um, labels on the timeline so we know where where things are going to start playing. And here, let's move to the, the, the butterfly in the wild, that is the, the, ne the new one, the next one. I want this to start playing, I don't know, around here. So let's add a label there and say, let's call this slide one. Oops, I clicked the wrong thing, sorry. I am adding action, so I have to close this one. I have to click on this arrow here. We covered this the other day, so let's call this slide one. Now I will move the the I will track this, this thing for the second image that this will go around here. So I, I want to, to start playing somewhere around here, yeah. So I, I put now slide two. And let's go up a little bit. And for the early match, I don't want right there, I want something probably around here. Uh, and now it's called this one slide three. All right. Click enter. And now we can add some actions to the bottoms. Let's move this back to zero. Um, so let's go and select the first one, and once that is selected, anywhere where, where in the in, in the elements or if, if we see here, let me create more space here. Yeah, we see here that that is selected there. So I can take the the actions here or the actions here, or even the actions in here. So everywhere when you have these brackets, we can put the, the what we want there. And what we want is uh, to put actions when they click on the button. So let's click on click. And what we're going to, to put there, we are going to put uh, play. So we click here, play. And inside the play, we want to write slide one like this. So basically, once we click, it goes to the timeline and start playing from there. Let's copy this because we have to use this again. Let's close this one and we select the second button that is the one in the middle. And we put the click there and we put play from. So it's the same. Now we put paste and this is slide two. And we we'll repeat the same thing for the third one and click play from paste slide three. All right. So now um, when we play this on the browser, let's do control enter. Uh, if we click here, it goes to the first one. If we click here, it goes to the second one. If we click here, it goes to the third one. Okay, but they are too too high, too high there. So we have to to go back. And yeah, let's select the three of them. And let's move them much lower. Probably right there. That's that's good. So now we have that that working. Uh, now I, I have already this center on the on the screen, but it basically what we have to do is we click on the on the stage and we look at the code there, and we have to add this in order to center this on the stage. So this refers to to uh, the stage, and basically this is the CSS. Uh, control that says center this thing. Um, if you don't know how to program, don't care about this, just copy this and it will center the thing. Um, so that's it for, for, for this video. 
it's a short one well 10 minutes not that short um, so in the next one we are going to cover a few more things we are going to to add a, a stop uh, when when you roll over the mouse on top of the, the the presentation so if you want to stay more on one slide that that could be done and then when you roll out the the mouse from the the stage or from the, the presentation it will continue uh, moving as, as before also we were going to to add left and a right arrow so you can basically like in sliders you have a, a right arrow around here and a left arrow around here so you can navigate from back and forth without using the other button so you have different options and after that, we are going to, to start working on, on something more advanced. Basically, we are going to introduce automation. Everything that we have done here is completely manual. The, the addition of each of the buttons that we clicked was completely manual. Later on, we are going to, to show how each time that we create the slides, all the, the navigation will be automatically created for us. For that, we need to, to program a little bit, but I, I hope... Uh, I mean, since you can copy whatever I'm putting here, you don't need to know exactly what's going on. And also, I'm going to cover how to create or change the slides, uh, basically changing an um, external file, an XML or a JSON file, and I will explain how to do that. So you don't have to, to build everything manually like here. I mean, this is good for, for a few slides, uh, but, but if you want to maintain this and, and making changes often, uh, probably you want some something a little bit more more uh, powerful and I have some other things coming in the future but I, I don't want to 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 have this video go too too long so I will explain them in the next one uh, thanks for watching and see you next time bye bye